In this section, we'll study applications of eigenvalues and eigenvectors to Markov chains. Markov chains are useful tools in some probabilistic models. The basic idea is as follows. Suppose that you are watching some collection of objects that are changing through time. The whole collection of objects has a finite number of states. There are assumptions on states and changes. The total number of objects is not changing, but their states are changing. The proportion of changing states is constant, and these changes occur at discrete times one after the next. So the changing manner is the same through whole time. Then we are at a good position to model changes by a Markov chain. See this example. Consider a three-story aviary at a local zoo which houses 300 small birds. The cage has three levels. The birds spend their day flying from one level to another. Here, our problem is to determine what the probability is of a given bird being at a given level of the uh, aviary at a given time. To model a Markov chain, we need the data and observe a vector P, P1, P2, P3. Here PI is the proportion of birds on the ith level. So these are probabilities. So they must be non-negative and uh, the sum must be 1. After 10 minutes, we have uh, another uh, observation and p prime of course uh, they are not negative and sum is one now we have uh, assumption uh, the change from p to p prime is given by a linear operator on r3 then this change can be expressed by a matrix which is called uh, the standard metric, you learned it from uh, section 1.9. So we um, use the notation T, a 3 by 3 metric. Then P prime is T times P. In this case, the metric T is called the transition metric for the Markov chain. Another 10 minutes later, uh, then we can observe another um, distribution. P double prime is T times P prime. The same metric T is used in these two equations because we assume that the probability of a bird having um, moving to another level is time independent. In other words, um, uh, the probability of a bird moving to a particular level depending only on the present state of the bird, not on any uh, past stage. So one uh, level so that current state is deciding the next one uh, without using the earlier um, uh, state. This type of model is known as Markov chain. But uh, we have a finite number of uh, states so that we call it a finite Markov chain. Now we'll uh, define uh, some official terms. A vector P having n components 
with a non-negative entry as that add up to 1 is called a probability vector. And a stochastic metric is a square metric whose columns are probability vectors. Uh, that means each column of the metric is um, has the entries are uh, non-negative, but the sum is one. That is left stochastic metric. We can define right stochastic metric. In this case, um, the each row uh, is a probability vector. Uh, once we say the simplest stochastic metric, that, that means usually left stochastic metric. In this lecture, we'll deal with only the left uh, stochastic metric. A stochastic metric is also called a probability metric, transition metric, substitution metric, or Markov metric. We'll use this um, term, um, stochastic metric. T is a stochastic metric, and P is a probability vector. Then, uh, multiplication is also a probability vector. V1 to Vn are the columns of T then the product TP can be written in this way. Now we, we can easily see that the entries of the product um, are non-negative. The reason is that uh, in originally uh, P has only non-negative entries and also T has non-negative entries, their product must be non-negative, right? And the sum, if we try to um, add the, the components of uh, the Q, then it's same as that. Now, so that we try to sum uh, vertically first, then uh, that will be one, so that the sum is same as this one. Now, from the beginning, now the sum of these uh, p values must be one. So the product is again a probability vector. <coughs> I'm sorry. Now we define the Markov chain. In general, a finite Markov chain is a sequence of probability vectors x0 to uh, the later vectors uh, together with, with a stochastic metric T such that x1 is obtained from x0 with a multiplication of the stochastic metric and x2 is again from x1, x3 is again from x2 so that one uh, stage of vector, the probability vector is transformed to the next stage so without using the earlier stage so that that is a Markov chain. We can rewrite uh, the above conditions as a recurrence relation xk plus 1 as t times xk. The vector xk is often called a state vector. Uh, it is a collection of states. Uh, this figure is showing annual percentage migration between a city and its suburbs. And each year, 95% of uh, people is uh, staying or moving inside a city, but only 5% and moving out to uh, its suburb. And from suburbs, 97% is staying. Uh, now 30% is moving to the city. 
Now, Oshum in a city and its suburbs, uh, it is observed. Then we can model uh, a Markov chain and annual migration between these two parts of the metropolitan region can be expressed by a migration metric M. So that is uh, this value. So uh, first column is representing city and second column is, is suburbs. So in the city, again, is a city and suburbs. City to city, the city to suburbs, and that is suburb to suburb, suburb to city, okay? Suppose that 2023 population of the region is 60,000 in the city and 40,000 in the suburbs. What is the distribution of the population in uh, 2024 and on in 2025? Then we can multiply this migration metric to the vector 60,000, 40,000. Then we can get uh, the, the population in 2024. If we multiply one more time, then we can get the population for this year. So let's do it uh, by using uh, MATLAB or Octave. And that is the migration metric. And this is the population vector in 2023 and we multiply M, that is for 2024. The answer is given here. Now, one more multiplication will have uh, the population in 2025 here. You can see that the total number uh, is not changing all the way the same. So in this problem, we assumed that there is uh, uh, no uh, uh, migration from the outside in the city and suburb, so that mm, it can happen. Okay, now let's try to get uh, the transition metric for the aviary example. And now that is uh, now assumptions we are making uh, but once you spend a long time in observing how the birds are moving, then you may get this, um, the assumptions. And this kind of assumptions should be made from observation. Okay. Whenever a bird is on an, any level of aviary, the probability of that bird staying on the same level 10 minutes later is half. So uh, in one level with a half probability in 10 minutes later, again, the bird will be there. Now for the first level and yeah, the probability of moving to uh, second level in 10 minutes is one third and moving to third level is one over six. Okay, so for this um, data, we should be able to make um, the transition metric. Okay, in the beginning, for every level, uh, the boots are staying in 10 minutes with uh, half probability. That is this one. In fact, all these diagonals are coming from this statement. And for the first level, so that is now here, uh, uh, level one, level two, level three, and that is now level one, level two, level three. Now, this is um, the, the levels and now that is changing uh, the state so that from here uh, in level one, if we focus on level one, then in 10 minutes, half will stay. 
and one third will move to level two, and the remainder will move to a third level. So that means a sort of a uh, transition probability. Okay. Now, for the second level, the probability of moving to either the first and third is one fourth. So that, and from the first statement here, the staying half, and now in 10 minutes later, in quarter probability are given. So we put here quarter and quarter. Now for third level, from the first statement, we have one half, and the probability of moving to the second level is one third, and moving to the first is one mm, over six, so that we put here one over six and one over three. So this each vector is uh, uh, representing a changing probability for each level. Okay. Uh, find the transition metric for this example. Okay, we found here. Uh, suppose that after breakfast, all the birds are in the dining area on the first level. Uh, where are they in 10 minutes, in 20 minutes, and 30 minutes? So in the beginning, the distribution is 1, 0, 0. And during the breakfast, uh, all birds are on the level 1, so that probability is 1 on the level 1 for other levels is 0. So that now uh, start with that, we multiply uh, the transition metric once and twice and, and also three times to get the probability of birds in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes, right? Okay. So here, start with uh, uh, the probability at time zero, and this is a transition metric, and we multiply t to get p1, another multiplication to get p2, another multiplication to get p3, then we can see uh, this one. Okay, so that 30 minutes later, uh, this is the probability of uh, uh, the birds on each um, level. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the end of uh, part one, and we'll continue in the second part. Thank you.